Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we are ready to get into our Rooted in the Word uh, session on tonight. We are um, dealing with the Internal Affairs preaching series. It's now been turned to our uh, Internal Affairs Bible study series. And um, man, God has been blessing us. Uh, tremendously. He's been meeting us every single time. And um, what, I've, what I've been discovering is that he really wants the people of God to be free. He really wants the people of God to be free. So if you have not um, seen any of the other videos, uh, I'm encouraging you right now to go back and go and watch some of the other videos in this series, this particular teaching series. I mean, we have dealt with um, how to defeat and overcome depression as well as um, discouragement. And that's such a big one that uh, that fights against the people of God. We have dealt with how to overcome uh, anger and unforgiveness. Listen, um, so many people are shut down and just frustrated with anger and, and unforgiveness. Um, we have also looked at um, how to overcome and defeat fear and anxiety, uh, what it really looks like to put your trust wholly in the Lord. And so uh, tonight we're dealing with another man. We're dealing with probably one of the biggest issues. Uh, if not, I would say anger and unforgiveness is up there as well. But this one tonight um, is where a lot of us as believers, we... We love God. You know what I'm saying? We love God. Uh, we love church. Um, but a lot of times we don't really allow God to deal with the uh, the inner parts of us to give us the victory over lust and compulsion, lust and compulsion. So tonight, that's where we're going. I need somebody to share this video. I need somebody who's jumping on here tonight to uh, be interactive because we're going to talk tonight. We're going to talk tonight. If y'all be real, y'all be real with me. I'll be real with you. I want to be um, transparent because this was uh, at one point in time, this was part of even my past and my history uh, with God dealing with these uh, these kind of issues. But uh, I can testify that God is a deliverer. I can testify that God is he is stronger than uh, the things that used to govern and rule us tonight. So uh, get on the video. I we appreciate you. We want you to be interactive tonight. We're getting ready to start. Uh, let's pray and let's just invite the Holy Spirit in. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we honor you. Father, we thank you tonight for allowing us this opportunity to come and study your word. Father, bless us as we go deeper in your word tonight. Bless us as we Father, come to get revelation, God, concerning ourselves, revelation concerning, oh God, what you what you are saying to us and understanding, oh God, how to break chains, oh God, and how to get the victory in our life. Father, we praise you, we adore you, we love you, and we honor you on tonight. Father, meet us tonight and help somebody to get the victory through this teaching. Amen. All right. So we are ready. Um, tonight, and I know that it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, grab your Bibles. You're going to need your Bibles. Um, get your notebooks, your pen and pad out, because uh, it's going to be good tonight. All right. It's going to be good tonight. All right. So um, first, I want to start off uh, by maybe giving us some def definitions. All right, I'm going to give us some definitions and um, because we got to understand what we're dealing with and what we're talking about properly. All right. So um, when you think about the word, you know, lust, uh, you think about it, you know, a lot of people think just uh, sexual in connotation, but it's a little bit deeper than that. Um, it's more than just a simple desire. Uh, it's more than just uh, a little, a little something. It, it's a, it's a big deal, and it's a big deal even in the church. 
I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. It's a big deal uh, even in the church. And so if we don't deal with it, um, it's going, it has the ability to even uh, infiltrate our lives as believers. And there's so many believers that love God, but struggle with these things. It, there's so many believers that love God and they find it, uh, they find it so hard and almost, I've talked to people who feel like it's impossible to get the victory in, in some of these areas. Um, but tonight we're, we're getting ready to go there. So um, lust. What is it? All right. What is it? What is it? Um, number one, I want to use two definitions tonight uh, for what it is. Uh, the first one is that uh, lust is a strong sexual desire, a strong sexual desire. All right. That's the one that you know, a lot of times when we think about lust, that's what first thing that comes to our mind uh, is a strong sexual desire. All right. Um, um, but the next one is what the scripture refers to it um, as lust is better defined scripturally as any sensual appetite that is regarded as sinful. Any sensual appetite that is regarded as sinful. Thank you. Thank you. My wife said, my wife said, freedom comes tonight. Listen, by faith, I believe that freedom can come tonight. So lust is any uh, uh, appetite, any appetite that is regarded as sinful in nature. All right. So let's look at the uh, let's look at the foundational scripture and then we'll kind of get into it. All right. Because, um, you know, the, the, the you think about uh, lust and do I have lust in me? You know, it's not just sexual. It's many different things. That's why we're talking about lust and compulsion. So let's look at, uh, I think the main scripture uh, that I want to look at tonight is let's start off with, uh, how about James? James chapter 1, uh, 3 through 15. James chapter 1, 3 through 15. All right. James chapter 1, 3 through 15. Let's go there tonight. All right, so um, I'm going to read it out of the King James Version on tonight. Uh, the word of the Lord says this, James 1, 13 through 15. It says, let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God. Let no man say that I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. When he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed, then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death, all right? So that is big tonight because in our understanding of it, we want to understand the nature and how, uh, how lust even works. How does it work? How does it function? So in understanding the functionality uh, uh, and the, the way that lust works, it is outlined nowhere more clearly than in this scripture on, on right here in James 1, 13 through 15. So he's talking about us being tempted, all right? Because all of us, I don't care who you are, you are going to face temptation. You are going to face things that uh, you can be, you can be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, a deacon, a mother, uh, whatever you call yourself, you are going to face temptation in some kind of way, all right? Uh, our spiritual walk is one where uh, we are in a real fight. And that's what I want to drive home tonight, y'all, that we are in a real fight. And the fight is for your soul. The fight is for your eternal soul. All right. And so uh, it is the enemy's job to keep us bound. It's the enemy's job to keep us tied up in things that will ultimately cause us to be distanced from God and separated from communion with the Holy Spirit, all right? 
And so uh, he loves to get believers caught up in entanglements. Oh, yeah. He loves to get believers caught up in entanglements. And I know Jada, y'all know, you know, Jada made it made it famous uh, when because she wanted to call what she was caught up in an entanglement uh, with August entanglement with August. But, you know, she should have just called it what it was. I fell in an adulterous relationship because I was compelled by my lust. All right. Galatians five and one. Yeah. The entanglement is, you know, she didn't come up with that. Galatians five and one. Um, it says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free and be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage. Galatians five and one. I know that one. I know that one from 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 up here. Uh, stand fast in the liberty, in the freedom where, where Christ has made you free and be not entangled uh, again with the yoke of bondage. Come on, let's talk tonight. God bless you, Apostle Smith. God bless you, Sharonda. Thank you all for joining in with us tonight. So we're looking at the nature of lust. So he says, let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God because God cannot be tempted with evil. All right. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust. OK, drawn away by his own lust and enticed. All right. So um, the 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 lust is something that is in us according to our sinful nature, according to our sinful nature, according to the flesh. There are certain things that the flesh wants. There are certain things that the body wants. And your lust is not always the same as someone else's lust. The things that drive you, the things that call you, the things that uh, pull on, on, on your sensual fleshly side is not always going to be the same as someone else's, although it may be similar, although it may be common. But what you got to understand is that there is something that is in you that is drawn to things that are not godly. And we got to come to terms with it. We got to come to terms with it and we got to be real with it. Oh yeah, there's parts of us in me and in you tonight that is drawn to certain things that are ungodly. So God does not tempt you with, God does not tempt any man uh, because he cannot be tempted with evil. Your temptation does not come from God. It comes from something that is on the inside of you. All right. Now, some stuff we didn't ask for. We didn't ask for some things that are developed in us as lust and as compulsions were developed in us because of what we were exposed to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, some things that we that were developed in us is because of what we were exposed to. You didn't ask for it. You didn't want it, but you got exposed to some things. All right. And then it created a stronghold and a lust. Uh, 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 it created a passion for something that is against God. And I don't, I don't care. You can be Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. You can be saved, dance, speak in tongues and all of that. There is still always going to be something that is in your flesh that wants something that God does not approve of. Mm, glory to God. So no need in you feeling ashamed. There's no need of you feeling alone. We are all in a fight. Come on, somebody. We are all in a fight. Living holy is a fight. Keeping your mind, keeping your mind righteous is a fight. Come on, somebody. It is a fight. It is a daily fight. It is a daily, it is a daily uh, 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 wrestling match. It is a daily struggle. And you cannot get, you cannot be a, a surprise about the part of you that wants something that God does not approve of. You can't be shocked by it. The scripture lets us know that the lust, that the temptation comes from a lust that is within. All right. So why is that important? Because when you understand that the lust is something that is within, uh, you understand. Thank you, Sharonda. You understand that um, with the lust is something that is within. You have to know and you have to understand that I have to identify the root causes of what is happening in my life. I have to identify what is the root. I cannot be moved by uh, the symptomatic behavior, but I have got to be moved by 
the, I have to be focused on cutting things off at the root. All right. Certain things that you you find yourself in cyclical behaviors and cyclical patterns. You have got to understand that if I don't ever deal with the root of this thing, I'm never going to get victory over the symptoms. Come on, somebody. Sometimes the reason why you keep falling in the same areas is because you have not identified the root. All right. Uh, uh, and we're going to get to it. So he says, every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. You, you got to understand it. You got to own it. You got to know that it that is something that is in me. All right. We want to blame everything on the enemy, the external enemy. But we don't ever want to look in the mirror sometimes and say, no, it's in me. It's in me. All right. But I thank God that he has he has a remedy. He has a strategy. He has power to help us overcome um, the ugly side of us, because the truth is tonight without the grace of God, without the power of God, there is an ugly side of us. If we ever become detached from God, we will do things that we said we would never do. The, the, the people that we judge, we will find ourselves in the same boat. It's only the grace of God that is keeping you. That's why you don't need to be judging folk, because if you ever get separated from God long enough, you'll do some things that'll shock you. All right, let's go further. So he says, we are drawn away of our own our own lust. What's going on, Pastor Abraham Bellinger? That's my man right there. That's my friend right there. God bless you. So he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And lust, when it has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. This thing is a progression, okay? So lust starts on the inside of you. And then lust has got to conceive, okay? So God does not judge you because you have a certain lust or a certain desire. God does not judge you because you have a certain lust or a certain desire. He is looking at what you do with it, all right? So think about conception. Conception is going to come uh, when there is a mutual there is a uh, mutual, your mama and your daddy conceived, they came together and they agreed that this is what we wanted, that this is what we're going to do. All right. So the thing about it is that God is looking at is I'm not judging you on the fact that you have lust, you have something pulling you, you have a desire, but I am, I am looking at, are you conceiving with the lust in you? In other words, are you in agreement with the lust that's trying to uh, entice you? Are you in agreement or are you fighting against it? Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Brandy. Are you in agreement with it? Are you surrendering to it or are you fighting against it? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I you know, I have some, you know, I, I have some things that even as a pastor, some crazy things will cross my mind. But, you know, I got to I got to deal with it. And I got to say, Satan, you are a liar. You are a liar. I cast down every imagination. I cast down every thought and I bring it into obedience. But many times we have to understand that we have to understand that the thing that makes lust conceive is when the will and the heart agree with what the flesh is trying to press upon you. Woo, God, hallelujah. Are you fighting against it? And here's why it is important for you to fight against it, because lust conceives and then it develops into sin. And then sin causes you to get in. Sin causes you to be separated or distanced from God. Sin causes there to be a separation or a distance from God. And, and if you love God like I do and you possess his spirit, I don't want anything to separate me from the one that I love. I don't want anything to separate me from the one whom I adore. I don't want anything to separate me from the one who gave his life for me. So why sometimes are we defeated by lust is because we come into agreement with it. Now, the, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's what the scripture says. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this, yeah, the flesh is very weak. And we're going to get into that. 
Because many of you, uh, uh, you have a heart after God, but you're like, pastor, I'm struggling in this area. Pastor, I just can't get the victory in this area. Help me tonight. I'm going to help you tonight. Now, all right. Now, watch this. Sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. You have to understand when you flirt with lust, you are flirting with a piece of death. When you flirt with lust, it's little sips of poison. Mm. And ultimately, ultimately, if lust and compulsion dominates your life and you, you succumb to it and submit to it, there is a real hell. There is a real eternal separation from God, y'all. Hear me tonight. Because some, some, some people, we play with it as if this thing is not life or death. We toy with it like it's not life or death. I, got to, I, got, I, I know I'm getting passionate tonight, but you cannot play with these things, y'all. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. It's... it's and, and I don't care who you are, you know, uh, 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 you know, what walk of life you were in. All right. So so the enemy has to identify something in you in order to entice you. Satan and demonic forces, they are not omniscient. They are not all knowing. They are not omnipresent. They are, they are not like God, but they have, to, they have to find something in you to entice you with. And they play upon your lust. So here's what they do. Here's what they do. In order for the enemy to identify what will entice you, he has got to study you to find something that you like. Here we go, y'all. He's got to find something that you like. And here's how he does it. Here's how he does it. He does it by studying us carefully. He sits and waits and he watches. And he studies us carefully. And he watches what we watch. He watches what you say. And he watches what you entertain. That's the way that the enemy figures out what your type is. That's the way the enemy figures out what your lust is. By what you entertain. So, so uh, whatever you begin to entertain through the senses is how he figures out what lust is on the inside of you. So you flipping channels, watch this, you flipping channels and then, and then something catch your eye and then all of a sudden you stopping on something inappropriate, X-rated, fully sinful, lustful. And then the, the demonic forces is like, oh, that's what they like studying. That's what they like. He looks to study you to find out what your particular lust is. Sometimes it's what we say, girl, you know, I, you know, I can't handle them tall, dark and sexy ones. That's my weakness. Okay. He's listening. He's listening to what you say. And then the next thing he does is he gets somebody else dominated by a lust spirit, tall, dark and handsome and makes you cross paths makes them want to jump in your inbox because he heard what you said was your type he heard what you said is the one that you just can't control yourself see he studies us y'all we're dealing with ancient demonic forces and they study and they wait and they look for doorways. They look for doorways and they look for entryways. So the enemy has to find, he has to study you and he has to find out what pulls on you. And then that's what he brings your way. Mm. He, looks at what we, he looks at what we watch. He looks at what we say and he watches what we entertain. That's how he figures out what to bring your way. You keep wondering why the same type of person keeps coming into your life. You keep wondering why the same type of uh, 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 tem temptation keeps coming your way. The same type of personality, exactly what got you the last time, exactly what made you fall the last time, exactly what, I, I mean, he knows, he studies us, y'all. Come on, somebody. 
All right. We got it. We got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. And that's why you have to guard your gates. Come on, Brandy. You have to guard your gates. This is why I watch what I watch. This is why I watch what I listen to. This is why I watch because everything that formulates and becomes a lust has got to enter in through one of the senses. Hmm. In order for it to pull on the flesh, it's got to the flesh, the, 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 the flesh can only operate through the senses. The flesh can only operate through the senses. Come on, y'all. What I see, what I hear, what I taste, what I smell, what I feel. The flesh can only operate through sensory perception. It can only operate through these senses. And if you don't guard your gates, then it that's where the pull of the flesh comes from through the senses. And once it goes past the senses, it goes to the second realm. What is the second realm of you? Which is the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions, the feelings. All right. That's why when you hear a certain song, you hear a certain kind of music, it puts you in a mood and it reminds you, it brings, pulls you back into memories. Mm, I can't when you listen to that certain kind of music, certain memories begin to play. So the enemy went through the senses of the sound of what you were listening to. And then he began to tap into the soul, which is the seat of your emotions and your memory and, and your and your and your affections. And so he got to He got to come through the senses so we can get to the soul. And once he can get to the soul, that's when he can infiltrate and corrupt your spirit. And that's called demonic uh, uh, possession and demonic oppression. He got to get in from the gates, from the gate of the senses to the gate of the soul to ultimately he wants to develop a stronghold in your spirit. Woo! <laughs> Tommy said you got to turn off that Marvin Gaye. Oh Lord, that's funny, man. That's funny. But but this is how we operate, okay? This is how we operate. So let's go. Um, let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians, all right? I want to go to Galatians tonight. Galatians chapter number five. Oh, we're gonna help somebody tonight. We're gonna help somebody tonight. We ain't even really tapped in yet. Good. Y'all stay with me. Share this video. Share this video. We ain't even tapped in yet. That's just the appetizer there. Galatians 5. I want to say I'm looking for it now. All right. Uh, verse 16. All right. Verse 16. And I'm going to read it in the uh, King James Version. I'm going to get the, read it from the King James Version first. All right. So. The word of the Lord says this. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. New Living Translation, same verse. So this I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. All right. King James Version, verse 17. For the flesh lusteth after the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the things that you would, all right? Or in other words, so that you will not do what's really in your heart because you are in a fight. Listen, people of God, we are in a fight, all right? He says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, what does that mean to walk in the spirit, pastor? What does that mean? Here is it, here it is, here's the definition. Walking in the spirit means to consistently choose to yield. To walk in the spirit means I consistently choose to yield to the spirit. All right. I consistently choose to yield. Somebody put that in the comments. 
I consistently choose to yield. I consistently, it's not, it's not a one and done decision. It is a consistent, this is why it's, 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 uh, it's personified as a walk. Because when you walk, you don't get to your destination in just one leap. It's one foot before the other, one foot after the other. A walk is a consistent thing, all right? A walk is a consistent thing. I consistently yield to the spirit. I consistently yield, choosing to yield to the spirit, all right? That's what it means to walk in the spirit. The scripture reveals that it is possible to have two natures pulling on you at the same time. Y'all remember a tug of war? Y'all remember back in school, remember back in field day when they used to have a tug of war, all right? Um, uh, thank you. Thank y'all. I love the comments. Matt, Matt, thank you. We are in a fight so hard for a single 30-year-old, but I'll remember to keep yielding as I continue to grow. Bro, that's real talk. That's real talk, man. Thank you for your honesty. But listen, we've got, we, we, we got, we need help. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. All right. So, so I consistently choose to yield one choice at a time, one thought at a time, one day at a time. I consistently choose to yield. And back in the school, there was, there was, uh, uh, when we used to have field day, right? They used to have something called the tug of war and they would take about eight people and put them on one side of the rope and they would take another eight people and put them on the other side of the rope and then at the blow of the whistle both sides would pull and everybody would pull and pull right and, and eventually eventually the side that knew how to how to get down in the dirt the side that knew how to put their weight on it the side that had the the stronger people eventually would pull the other side and sway them uh, into their territory. That is exactly what happens between the flesh and the spirit. We are in a war. We are in a tug of war and the flesh is going to pull on you. Don't be surprised. The flesh is going to pull on you. It's going to demand, do it. It's going to demand you need this. It's going to demand you want this. It's going to demand this is going to make you feel good. And the spirit is going to pull you into the holy, righteous things of God. The spirit is going to pull you into righteousness and into holiness and into and into loving and learning to love purity, learning to love things that are godly. And the spirit will constantly pull against what the, the flesh is pulling on. Now, here is the key, y'all. Here is the key tonight. The question becomes which side is going to win is going to be determined by which nature has been fed the most. Hear me tonight. Which nature is fed the most? Because just like in the tug of war, the stronger side will win. And the problem with us is, is that we want to win the war without feeding our spirit. And so your tug of war looks like this. Your tug of war looks like this. You feed the flesh six days out of the week. You feed the flesh with what you watch. You feed the flesh with what you listen to. You feed, you feed the flesh with what you entertain. And Satan is just study, uh, uh, he's, he's constantly studying you and you feed the flesh. And you're in your tug of war, you got a tug of war. The, uh, the flesh is like the size of, uh, of eight bodybuilders and your spirit man is, is a, is a bunch of 10 year olds. <laughs> your spirit man is a bunch of 10 year olds. Now you, you already know that grown strong men got a, got a huge advantage over little 10 year olds in a tug of war. You could put 30, 10 year olds. The, the fact is the one that you feed the most y'all is going to win. All right. So here's what we do. We tell God it's impossible. It's impossible. God, nobody can do that. Nobody can. Nobody can do that. You know, uh, everybody's sleeping around. Everybody's watching porn. Everybody's drinking alcohol. Everybody's doing everybody's doing this. God, I mean, you can't really expect me to live out this holiness. You can't really expect me because it's too hard. I tried. I failed. But what you got to understand is that you got to feed the spirit. What is your what is your what is your relationship with God's word? 
What is your relationship with God's word? You got to feed your mind constantly engulfing your mind with the word of God. What is your worship life look like? You know what? When I really get in the presence of God, when I really get in the presence of God, it's funny how every fleshly desire seems to flee in the presence of God. It's funny how every stronghold and struggle seems to just just vanish and disappear when you really get in the presence of God. What is your prayer life like, y'all? See? See? And the reason why is because we forgot that we were in a war for our souls. We have watched other people, all right? We have watched other people and we have, we have made excuses, but the Bible says, do not make provision for the flesh. You have kept your eye on your girlfriends and you've seen them riding on what, they, what, what grace is covering them in. You have seen your homeboys riding on what grace has been covering them in, not knowing that they have been taking sips of death little by little. And the grace that covers now, one day the Lord will uncover when we sit before the judgment seat of the, of the most high God and every deed will be exposed and everything done in secret will come to light. Listen, you are in a fight for your life. You are in a fight for your soul, guys. Come on, somebody tonight. Woo, Jesus, help me tonight. And so you've got to feed your spirit. Your spirit has got to be so fed and so, uh, 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 it's got to be so uh, uh, built up that it is stronger when lust comes to pull. Because lust will come to pull. All right. So let me give you my testimony. Let me give you my testimony, right? I, uh, I got saved at a young age. I got saved at a young age, um, 17 years old, 17 years old. In high school, I got saved. All right. But prior to being saved, I had built up, I had built up, I had, I had been exposed to certain things and I had built up a mindset that was trained in lust. I had developed a mindset that was trained in lust. And when I got saved, it did not just go away because I wanted it to go away. It did not just go away because I wished it would go away. It doesn't work like that. In the spirit, it is a constant yielding. Listen, the, the lust and the flesh demands. It demands. It pulls. The spirit invites. And so you have got to. He, he, he does not. Uh, 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 the Holy Spirit will aid you and help you. But you've got to yield to the spirit. It's a voluntary yielding to the spirit. All right. And so and so in this in this in this uh, mindset that I had, I was saved, but I was still struggling with lustful thoughts. I was still struggling. And every once in a while, I would fall back into pornography. Every I, my thoughts were my thoughts were uh were impure back in the, the back in those times. And and so I was like, Lord, you know, what is going to take? And I at one point in my life, I felt like I will never be delivered from this. I will never be delivered from this. I don't even see how, God. I don't see like I don't see how. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, but that as I begin to submit to God, little by little, walk in the spirit, read my word, pray and fast, learn about more and more about God. There are things, there are things now that, that my flesh used to love and enjoy that I can honestly say that is now a turnoff to my spirit. It's a turn off to my spirit. It grieves my spirit. All right. So, so let me, let me tell you, like, you know, we all live in a digital age, right? We live in a digital age and we live in uh, the time of the internet, right? So there, you know, there are times where uh, pop-up ads and advertisements will come even on Facebook. You know, you get these 
pornographic friend requests. So all my fellas out there, you know what I'm talking about. You get these pornographic friend requests with some half nude person wants to be your friend. You don't even know them. You don't know what it's about. You know, you're like, what is this? And then the page has a link to come to this site and, you know, see this, this and that. You know, there were times before where, you know, when those kind of things would have dominated my mindset and my flesh. And I would have been like, oh, God, you know, help me, Jesus. Let me pray. Look at this because this is enticing. This is this is desirable. Look at look at her. Look at how she looks, you know, yada, yada, yada. You know, can we can we be real tonight? Can we be real tonight? But there's a place that you can get in the spirit. There's a place where you can get in the spirit where the things that used to where that used to pull on your flesh and dominate your flesh, it becomes uh uh, it becomes uh uh so, so, so you're so in tune with the Holy Spirit that you see it as something that will break the fellowship between you and God, and I want no part of it. I want absolutely no part of it. All right. And, you know, people say, uh, oh, you know, well, you know, it's, it's hard for, you know, maybe if I just get married. Right. If I just get married uh, and that's that's what that that helps. You know, that helps. The Bible says uh, it's better to marry than to burn with lust. If you cannot control yourself, it's better to marry than to burn. So marriage is a remedy for sexual lust. Marriage is the remedy. But let me tell you something. Even when you're married, you still got to fight lust. Even when you're married, you still got to fight lust. Because there's something called adultery. There's something called fornication. There's something called pornography. There's something called the lust of your eyes. Listen, you have to understand that, that marriage alone don't solve it. You got to deal with it from the inside. So there is a tug of war, y'all, tonight. There is a tug of war. This is real tonight. So the so the so God began to deliver me through a process and the process happened through the renewing of my mind. He had to train me. He had to train me to see that the way that you are formulated to look at women is that you look at them as objects. He said, listen to me, son, you look at women as objects to fulfill something in you. That's how your brain has been wired to see women because of pornography and because of the culture, because of the rap videos that you used to watch. And you had the woman, you know, uh, you had the woman with the, you know, the big behinds or, or showing their breasts and, and, and they were surrounding the, the, your fate, your favorite rap star. And you saw him talk about how many women he got, how many women he slept with. You have to understand that you train your mind to see women as objects, son. And now I've got to untrain you to, to, to see women as my holy creation. You've got to see them as this is somebody's daughter. This is somebody's, this is somebody's mother. This is somebody's daughter. And most importantly, they are a daughter of the most high God. They possess a soul that God is intimately in love with. How dare you violate them with, with, with sinful lust of your eyes and of your heart. You've got to see it differently. And so the culture, come on, come on, lady, come on, lady K. My wife said them rap songs, man. The culture has wired us, y'all. The culture has wired us. And, and we look at things on TV and everybody, everything on TV is over so sexualized. And they want to drive, the enemy's agenda is to drive lust into you, drive lust into you and, and, and cause you to be consumed as if you are missing out. As if you are missing out, you are, listen, you are not going to die. <laughs> you are not going to die by by holding yourself together. He's trying to get you to feel like you're missing out. What was the temptation that he brought to Eve? Did God not say, did God really say that if you eat of the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, that you shall surely die? He said, look, Eve, you are missing out on something that is desirable. You are missing out on something that's going to make you feel good. And that, and in reality, you aren't missing anything. Come on, Brandy. I love that. I love that. You aren't missing anything. All right. All right. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. Cause I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give you more. 
I got to give you more. So the question becomes, what nature has been fed the most? We talked about a very strong sexual desire. We said, but lust is really, lust is really any sensual appetite that is regarded as sinful. So watch this. When we lust, when we lust for money, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, the love of money. People have taken that, they've misquoted that. Money is the root of all evil. No, 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 no. Money is not the root of all evil. Money answereth all things. All right. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches of glory. Money is not evil. But the thing about it is the lust of money, the lust for money is, is known as greed. So any sensual appetite regarded as sinful can be a lust. You can lust for money and it is called greed. Watch this. You can lust for food and it is called gluttony. It is called gluttony. So we are going to get into, we are going to get into tonight, not only just the, uh, not only just the sexual uh, identities of lust, but there are other things that we got to deal with that become compulsive behaviors. All right. Let's talk about some of these compulsive behaviors, compulsive behaviors. What is a compulsive behavior? A compulsion, a compulsion is any irresistible urge to behave in a certain way, especially against one's judgment or conscience, conscious wishes, all right? An irresistible urge to behave in a certain way, especially against one's better judgment or conscience wishes. So, so when we have compulsion, stuff that controls us, that dominates us, all right? Listen to this. Some people's compulsion is that you are dominated by shopping my god tonight and the reason why you constantly shop is because is because it validates something in you by having designer this or designer that it validates something in you how many people keeping up with the joneses that are in debt because they have compulsory habits of shopping. Oh yeah, for some of you, Amazon is the devil. <laughs> oh my God, for some of you, we buy things, we overspend, we get in debt because we got compulsions that, that things make us feel good. Having things make us feel good. It brings a value to us. And God is like, I want to give you your value. I want to give you your purpose, not the threads that you wear, not the designer bag or the designer shoes or the expensive car or, or, or the things that, that, you know, the designer shades. You put in value in this and you, you, are compelled, you are compelled, compelled to spend and to get into debt and do all these things because it validates something in you because you don't really like you. You don't really feel pretty enough. You don't really feel worthy enough. You don't really feel attractive and and these are the things that the enemy uses to keep us in strongholds. So it's not just about sexual lust tonight. Let's deal with it tonight. Let's deal with the night. For some people, it's overeating. Yeah, we said the lust over food is called gluttony. For some of us, it's overeating. And sometimes because food gives us pleasure, and we have not allowed God to deal with the depressions and we have not allowed God to deal with certain hurts. We run to anything that makes us feel good. And there are people that have been dominated, that have been dominated by a lust for food and you overeat because it becomes therapy. You overeat because it becomes therapy for you. It becomes therapeutic. And because I don't want to deal with the pain, because I don't want to deal with the hurt, I eat because it makes me feel good. At least it makes me feel less guilty than having sex with somebody who's not my husband or sex with somebody who's not my wife. But what we don't see is that the enemy says, I'm going to cut destiny short because I'm going to bring about high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer. I'm going to bring about hypertension, diabetes. I'm going to bring about all of these things because I can't get them with a spiritual thing. So I'm going to get them with a physical appetite and drive them into an early grave through a physical, a physical appetite. Y'all better talk to me tonight. Y'all better talk to me tonight. Y'all better talk to me tonight. 
Come on, comfort food. Come on, Sharonda. Comfort food. These things, these things that we run to to appease us. All right. What about what about um gambling? What about gambling? This is why Christians, you know, we we you know we you know it's not it's not really a sin. Uh, it's not really a sin to uh necessarily play the lotto. I know people got different ideas and thoughts about that. You know, you put you put one dollar on a thing, but you got to understand the reason why Christians are against gambling is because we know that it has addictive properties. Anything that has the potential to addict me or control me, we stay away from it because I don't trust the power of self. I don't trust the power of self. And so gambling, I've seen people's lives ruined by gambling. Compelled, compelled, you know, they blow their whole check waste their money gambling away you know that's a compulsive behavior what about um drinking al alcohol and substance abuse that's another compulsive behavior the devil knows if i can get you addicted addicted we got you got you got the uh the methamphetamine uh addiction culture right now and and uh, america is addicted to their prescription drugs y'all come on somebody compulsions and dominating things uh uh you know, I, you know, I just smoke because it makes me feel, listen to it. It makes me feel, it makes me feel. I smoke a little weed because it makes me feel. I like where it puts my mind. I drink a little bit because I like the spirit that it puts me in. You know, that's why when you go to the alcohol store, it talks about wine and spirits because you need to get into a different spirit in order to cope with what you're dealing with. You want to, you want to escape. You want to get away and I get it. But listen, when are we going to rely on his spirit and not another spirit? When are we going to rely on his spirit and not another spirit? When are we going to let God be God to heal us from the pain, to heal us from the rejection so we don't have to run from bed to bed? Ouch. So we don't have to run from bed to bed looking for validation, looking for love, looking for an easing of the pain. Deal with the root and you will get the victory over the fruit that it produces. Yeah, you've been running from bed to bed because you have not come face to face with your loneliness. You've been running from bed to bed. Hear me, fella. You know, I'm talking to my brothers. You've been running from bed to bed because you have not dealt with the part of you that feels incompetent. And so if you can get women to fall for you, if you can run your game and get them to let their guard down and let you in and let you hit and let you get it and let you do it, you feel something. It makes you feel accomplished. And you haven't dealt with the fact that you feel that you have not accomplished in your career. You have not accomplished in your goals. You have not accomplished in these areas. So let me dominate women that I can get in bed and make me feel like a man. Oh, my God, y'all, tonight, we got to deal with the root. We got to deal with the root, y'all. The root is something deeper. And until we get in, that's why when you get real relationship with God, deliverance comes through relationship. Woo, hallelujah. Deliverance comes through relationship. You cannot get deliverance apart from relationship. You cannot get deliverance apart from knowing him. We've been trying to get deliverance the wrong way. We've been trying to get delivered dealing with the symptoms. We have not dealt with the broken, hurt, lonely parts of us that have not allowed God in, that have not spent enough time in the presence of our Father to get healed, to get well, to get whole. Oh my God, to, to, to depend on him and stop depending on these things. Stop depending on shopping. Stop depending on eating. Stop depending on sex to do it. Stop depending depending on gambling to do it. Stop depending on alcohol and, and weed and all of this stuff. We've been, we've been running to this stuff to fulfill the broken part of us that only God can fulfill that void. And that's why you, you need more and more of it. Lust is never satisfied. Lust is never satisfied. You get a piece of it and it feels like it's going to satisfy, but then it runs you empty again. Lust is never satisfied. Jesus told the woman at the well, you, he says, he says, come and get a drink of me because when you get this drink that I got, you'll never thirst again. And she said, well, well, sir, please give of me of this water that you speak of where I'll never thirst again. 
And he said to her, go and call your husband first, John chapter four. And she says, uh, uh, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, you're right. You don't have a husband. You, matter of fact, you've had five men that you've been dealing with. And the one that you got right now, he ain't your husband either. And she said, "Woo!" I, he says, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And he says, listen, I've got to deal with, I came to deal with you through an analogy, through an allegory. You're coming to this well to get something to drink, to quench a thirst. Come on, thirsty woman. But let me deal with the real thirst. The real thirst that's driving you is not about this well. The real thirst that's driving you from man to man, from bed to bed. The real thirst that's driving you to the bottle. The real thirst that's driving you to overeat. The real thirst is something on the inside. And I got something that'll quench that thirst. Come on, Jesus. John chapter four, read about it. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the Lord's coming through here tonight. He's gonna to help us get delivered, delivered from some stuff tonight, all right? So we gotta realize that we are in a fight. We are in a fight. We are in a fight for our souls. The second thing we have to realize, I'm recapping, we have to realize that lust comes from the inside. What have you been exposed to? What have you been exposed to? What have you been exposed to? What comes through your family line? Because exposure is how the enemy works. The Bible says, flee youthful lust. Mm. Paul told Timothy, flee youthful lust. Flee youthful lust. Where's that found? Um, God, I got to find it. I got to find it. Flee youth, youthful lust is what he told Timothy. Flee youthful lust. And here is, the, here is the reason why he told Timothy, flee youthful lust. Because most of the lust that is developed in us is developed in us from the time in our adolescence when we were young. The devil is not waiting for you to become 20 something, 30 something, 40 something. No, he sows the seeds of lust in you at 13, at 16. What were you exposed to? What flows through your family line? Uh-huh. The reason why you got a you got a you you got a a, a proclivity to be uh, addicted to alcohol is because the devil has studied your family line and he knows that he's ruined the line of men and women in your family through alcohol addiction. Spirits are territorial. Spirits are generational. Spirits, that's how they operate. They follow bloodlines. They follow, and what they want to do is they want to expose you to something to create an appetite. <laughs> what have you been exposed to that the devil used to create an appetite? And sometimes it wasn't even your fault. Come on, let me talk to the one you were molested, you were raped, you were violated. And you did not ask for that. Let me tell you something. You are not broken. You are not ugly. You are not guilty. The appetites that came as a result of that is not even your fault. Woo, come on. The appetites that came out of that, that came out of that. Yeah, I know people right now that were raped or molested and it, and it, and it somehow their sexuality got warped and it turned into a, 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 uh, homosexual lust developed in them because they were touched the wrong way. What were you exposed to? This generation and this age that we live in, come on somebody, this generation and this age that we live in now, I am scared. Gener the millennials, oh my God, they had it hard, but I'm scared for what they call them, Generation Y? Generation Y got so much access to, to pornography and sexual deviance that they don't know who they are anymore. They don't even know that their, their identity. They don't know if they like men or women. They like both. They don't know what they want anymore. They have been exposed to so much that Satan is warping their sexuality. He's warping their sexuality. They don't even want to be in one relationship with one person anymore. At least back when we were struggling in our generation, our parents' generation, we were falling with the boyfriend and the girlfriend. This generation got hookups and, and they'll sleep with this one and then sleep with the next one the next week. It's like it's so casual. And the enemy's agenda is to warp our sexuality and to warp us with all kinds of lust so that we no longer look like God made us to be. We no longer, if he can, if he can warp our sexuality, he can destroy the family structure. 
He is after the family. He is after what God ordained, a husband and a wife, and they stick together and they stay together and they raise a child and they, and they, 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 uh, uh, teach the child the ways of God. And then through, and then a blessing flows through the generational line. The blessing of the Lord flows through the generational line because they learn righteousness from mommy and daddy. They learn uh, 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 about God so that the blessing can flow through the generational line. But he has our sexuality so warped that, that nobody can stay together because we're cheating on each other. <laughs> nobody wants to be married because we got all kind of lust. We don't know if we want a man or a woman or both. <laughs> we so warped in our sexuality, we want options instead of commitment. Look, look, look at yo, listen to me tonight. The devil is winning at this game because lust is destroying. His agenda is to pervert what God called good. And whatever God called good, the enemy has a perversion for it. If God calls it good, the enemy offers a perversion for it. He perverts it. Anything that God loves, he seeks to destroy. Mm, my God, I'm coming through here tonight. All right. Now, I've exposed the problem. Oh, my God. I'm already over my time, y'all. I am already over my time. Oh, Lord. I've exposed the problem. I've exposed the problem. You know what? I got to do this in a two-part series. I got to. I, I have too much more to unpack and to, and to reveal that I'm going to have to give you the rest of this on next week, y'all. Um, uh please subscribe to our to our ministry on, on Facebook y'all you know subscribe there uh, subscribe to our YouTube as well I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do this in a two-part series because I I can't I can't unpack it all tonight I've exposed some of the enemy's agenda I've exposed some of the problem and how he's operating on next week or next week Tuesday I'm going to help you how to get the victory pastor how did you get free? How did you break free from the addictions of pornography and lustful thoughts and lustful eyes? How did you break free? You know, I thank God because even though I had that lust issue, I was never a cheater. <laughs> I was never a cheater. My heart just couldn't let me be a cheater. That was something that was not in me. But I had a lot of um, I had a lot of things that were in my mind that were not holy and that was not good. I had a lot of things that I, you know, uh, played around with and toyed with that was ultimately would have led me to a place of uh, a, a further downward spiral because you can start off not being a cheater you can start off you know this and that but if you play with it long enough you'll find yourself doing stuff that you never said that you would ever do mm -hmm. um, next week next week y'all if y'all rock with me if y'all follow with us okay I'm going to help you on how to get the victory because a lot of people are crying out pastor I hear you I, I don't want to go to hell I don't want I want to live for God I want to live holy but you got to help me Show me how you got delivered. You know, be transparent enough with with me so I you can un, I can understand how you got delivered. Um, show me in the word how we win this fight. I want to win. Come on, somebody put that in the comments. I want to win. I want to win, and it doesn't just go away just because you get married. It doesn't just go away uh, uh, because you know, you get out of one relationship. This is a constant fight, and it's not only sexual. I got to win over every area that has been dominating me. Paul said, all things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. That means that I got the freedom to do a lot of things. I got the freedom to do a lot of things, to go a lot of places, but not everything is good for my spirit. And you got, we got to understand that not everything is good for your spirit. I can't tell you what to watch. As a pastor, I won't. I won't tell you what to watch. I won't tell you what to listen to. You got to decide that through the Holy Spirit. You got to let the Holy Spirit, because because some things you ought to know, that's not leading me into righteousness. Why do you want to watch that? Why do you want to listen to that? Why do you want to read that? Why do you want to watch 365? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm coming down your alley. I'm coming down your alley. Why do you want to watch this stuff? Why do you want to watch it? I'm, I can't tell you. I'm, not, I'm because because uh, as a leader, we don't we don't we don't. It's not about law. It's about the spirit of God. 
It's about keeping my spirit in a place where I stay surrendered and stay yielded to the Holy Spirit. I choose not to watch certain things. I choose not to listen to certain things because I don't want my spirit. I don't want my spirit to be ever be drawn away from him. I'm going to leave you with this. Solomon loved God at first. King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived. God blessed him with riches and with wisdom. And he loved God. But Solomon was drawn away when he began to entertain strange women. He ended up abandoning Jehovah and worshiping other gods because his lust pulled him into a place where he separated from God. Hear me tonight. It's not anything to play with, y'all. Yeah, grace has covered you this far. Grace has covered you this far. But there is a day and a time where grace, where grace, where, 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 where it reaches its limit. And that's when God calls us home. Or that's when he comes again. And what you did with my grace will determine where you will spend eternity. Mm. So I want to say to every person out there, you love God. You want to be free. I came to tell you there is hope. Don't beat up on yourself because you fall, because you fell. Keep fighting. Don't beat up on yourself because you made that mistake. Keep fighting. David made a mistake. David fell into the cycle. He fell into, he fell into an, an adulterous affair with another man's wife. And he, he, then he had to lie about it. Then he covered it up. Then he had Uriah killed. So the and one decision for lust caused him to commit murder, caused him to lie, caused him to have to shut down his relationship with God. And he even lost a child out of that. He lost a child out of that decision. Lost a child out of that decision. But my God, something about David, Psalms 51 said, create in me, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Listen, there is mercy enough to rescue you from every decision, from every fall, but you've got to choose God. You've got to choose God. You've got to choose God. Lord, help us to be free tonight. Holy Spirit, tonight we have heard your word. Father God, and we don't want to be dominated by our lusts. Help us to know that we have a real enemy with a real agenda to destroy our souls. Oh God, help us to see that there is a real enemy trying to pervert everything that you said was good and that you said was pure and that you said was holy. Help us to understand, God, that there is an enemy, oh God, who wants to pull us, pull our hearts away from you. And Lord, tonight we understand that he is trying to come through our eye gate. He is trying to come through our ear gate. He is trying to come through what we feel and what we smell and what we taste, God. He is trying to use the senses to to get to the soul. And after he gets into the soul, he wants to infiltrate our spirit. Tonight, I pray, God, that we would awaken, oh God, to the urgency, that we would awaken, oh God, to the beckoning call of the Holy Spirit. That we would awaken, Lord God, and know that we are in a war. God, help us to feed our spirit man. Help us to feed our spirit man worship. To feed our spirit man prayer. To feed our spirit man fellowship with the saints of God. To feed our spirit the word. To feed our spirit, Lord God, with fasting. Help us to feed our spirit, God, that, that we will not be caught undone. That we will not be caught off guard when lust comes to pull. That we will not be dominated by the flesh. That we we will be moved by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, you said with every temptation, God, you will make a way of escape. Father, help us to help us, oh God, to heed the warnings and heed, oh God, the, the, the remedy of the Spirit, Lord God, on tonight. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Deliver us, oh God, from temptations, oh God. For, deliver us tonight. We want to be yours, holy, oh God, so that we can serve you, so that we can worship you, God, so that we can fulfill the call and the destiny on our lives. God, help us tonight. 
Every person that's watching this, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching the replay, I pronounce the blessing of the Lord upon you and that new fire begin to come upon you and it begins to burn away even what you were exposed to. It begins to burn away uh, 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 the strongholds. It begins to burn away even the desire and every compulsory behavior that was dominating you, whether it be sex or whether it be whether it be overeating or whether whether it be a, a gambling or whether it be addiction to a substance or whether it be any other addictive property in the name of Jesus, we break it right now in Jesus name. We break it right now in its power in the name of Jesus in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Y'all, that's my time tonight. Thank y'all so much. Next week, next week, meet me right here. We're in a new time, Tuesday nights, Tuesday nights, 745. I promise you, boy, I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to help you, and I'm going to give you what the Lord is saying for us to break free. Every train is getting ready to fall off. I love y'all. Till next time. God is good. Hallelujah. Woo.